In a fascinating discussion with a renowned fashion designer, we learn about the incredible dedication and passion behind creating custom wedding attire. Despite home-related challenges, the designer's commitment shines through as she recounts a client's visit amid a house leak cleanup. Today, we're joined by an incredible designer who brings dreams to life through couture bridal wear. Picture this, a determined and resilient bride cleaning up a home leak before heading in for her interview. That's the kind of spirit we're diving into today. From humble beginnings of sketching as a child to mastering the art of fashion design, our guest's journey is nothing short of inspiring. She stumbled into the bridal world with a background in hotel uniform design, crafting custom pieces that resonate with each client's unique personality. Let's uncover the magic behind her process and the secrets to finding the perfect gown for your special day. Well, you're getting ready to get married in a few months and you need to find something to wear. And that is probably one of the, the best parts about getting married, especially if you're a bride, okay? And, but you're thinking, what do I want? You're looking through all these magazines and you see all these different styles, but you know what? You get over to the place that you're looking at for dresses, right? The bridal shop, and they sometimes don't look the best on you. What are your choices? What do you do? Did you know that over 68% of women that get married spend on the average a little over $2,000 for their wedding dress? This is a common statistic that I just looked up not too long ago, according to what you read on the internet, if that is true. But you know what? I have somebody here today that you're going to just love speaking to her. I've known her and her husband for about a couple of years now. They are here in Las Vegas. And she is an actual designer of wedding couture. If I said it wrong, I apologize. <laughs> However, and we think, and we're going to talk about designing your own dress that fits for your body, but also the misconceptions about having something personally made for you. So if you're thinking or you're getting ready to get married, you're going to want to hear what Sandra Falk has to say. Welcome and good morning, Sandra. How are you? I'm great. How are you doing? Thank you so much for having me. Oh, I am so excited to have you. And I want you to know, let's do a little backstory here. She is here this morning. They had a leak in her home. In the, in the office, she was in the just on her knees <laughs> cleaning up. Okay. I want you to know buckets around the house. She still showed up. Oh my gosh. That to me says a lot about somebody. So first of all, kudos to you. And uh, just tell us a little bit, um, Sandra, about your background and how you got involved. I know a bit of your background, but I don't want to share that. Let them a little bit about and talk about you and how you evolved into the wedding industry and designing wedding attire so i um since i was a little kid i've always loved fashion clothing i um had the innate sense where i could just look at something and then i could go home and try and figure out a way to make whatever it was that i that i saw so i had little you know sketches and things like that and um i took sewing all through high school i taught myself how to sew first and then um went to, when I got into high school I took all kinds of sewing classes and I just excelled in it it was something I truly truly loved and drove my sewing instructor crazy for a few years and ended up going to college in uh, Chicago um, I got a degree in fashion for fashion design once I graduated I moved to Las Vegas in 1986 it was awesome <laughs> so um, uh, I fell in love with the hotel industry and I started uh, I got a job working for a uniform company I started my uh, initial career was was designing uniforms for hotels and casinos around town and um, that was a lot of fun um, teaches you a lot about uh, uh, heavy duty construction and um, better oh, okay better better for some reason something happened okay so go ahead you started I got to the point where we edit that out um, where you you um, moved to Las Vegas in 86 you went to work for a uniform company yes yeah, started designing uniforms for hotels and casinos up and down the strip, Laughlin, Reno, um, traveled. It, when the riverboat started, I did um, um, designing for uh, uh, casinos that had riverboats on the water and stuff. And then one day, an executive of, of that I worked with, we've been working together for like three or four years, was getting married. 
And she was actually going to go and rent a wedding dress. I'm like, oh my God, you can't do that. And I'm a, I'm a pattern maker and a designer. I can, I can probably design something really cool for you. So um, that was like my first introduction into the wedding field because I'm used to working with 65, 35 poly cotton, you know, 100% cotton, poly, polyester. And so now I was able to use really beautiful refined silks and fabric and lace and um i just fell in love with it so it was it had always been on the back burner and then um my once my husband graduated from college UNLV with his hotel degree we moved like every five year the man was getting promoted and so we would have to move and so i would you know the fact that i had built my business i could take it with me anywhere being a designer you can design clothes in any state that you are so um, we moved around a bit and each time my, um, my business grew and grew and grew, but I really, um, wasn't heavily focused on bridal until we moved to the, um, East coast and a friend of mine that is a, uh, prominent bridal designer. We went to school together and I went up for a visit and he goes, you know, you're really creative. You should really try your hand at bridal stuff and just like, just do a line and see how you like it. See how it, how it comes out. And I'm like, okay, great. So um, I went to the textile show, show. I ordered up some beautiful silks and, you know, Mikado and lace and all of these wonderful, wonderful tex textiles. And I created my first line. I went to market in New York. I sold to a couple of stores and um, that turned out really, really great. But I was finding that um, there are a lot of people that really didn't want what was in the store. They kind of danced to their own beat and they were really looking for something unusual that um, better suited their personalities. And so I started designing a lot more custom pieces that way. And it's just evolved into people, you know, searching me out and finding me because they want something different. And, you know, I've seen some of your designs and they're absolutely gorgeous. And you, yeah. and it's not just limited to white bridal wear because there are so many different types. People want cultural designs, depending upon right. their background, their ethnic background. So I was listening to, I was um, speaking to a friend the other day. She was talking about a story. I think it was either pre-World War II. There was a woman that was a designer of wedding dresses. And she used to interview the bride. And if she thought the bride was on the right path, she used to sew a charm <laughs> into mm -hmm. the wedding dresses. Are you familiar with that? Yeah, I love that story? it. Yeah. And she was, she was so many charms. And the charm would be that if she felt that your marriage was going to last forever, it was like a good luck charm. <laughs> right, exactly. Do you have That's anything great. like that that you add on to your uh, your designs? Um, well, because, well, I'm Catholic. And so um, I get invited to a lot of weddings and I can't always go. And so each time I design something special for one of my brides, I always name the dress after a Catholic saint that has a similar kind of vibe as the person that I'm designing for. So in a way, it's a way that I can give them a little bit of a blessing kind of sort of. And all of, the, all of my bridal dresses in my studio, they're all named after Catholic saints. That's the style number. I, yeah. I Well, I, absolutely. I, I love that. I'm Catholic, so I understand. But I think yeah. that's pretty neat that you do that. That's fabulous. Yeah. So let's take a moment and talk about what is going on. First of all, when somebody comes to you, Okay. How do they find you? First of all, I mean, I know you're on certain social media platforms, but where are most of your clients coming from? Are they based here? Are they out of state? I have clients all over the United States. Um, um, I still have um, a following on the East coast. And so they will just refer their friends. If they're anywhere within driving vicinity or a plane right here, they refer and people, they come in from all over. Um, mm -hmm. So um, they, they will Google our name. They can find us through Google. We get a lot of, uh, clients through our, our Google page. So, mm -hmm. yeah. They, so they search out those keywords. They out. Huh? Yeah. They search out the keyword couture, custom made, custom fashion designer, bridal designs, and then our, our, um, website comes up. So somebody comes to you, right? What, what usually tell me the process that occurs with that client what what does it take and of course i know it has to probably do with the type of uh fabric they use but let's share with us a little bit about how that process goes about 
So uh, when I, when a client calls, they, you know, they get Steven and he gets all of their basic information. They set an appointment date uh, to come and just have a consultation. And we just sit on my big red couch and like you're in your, your, your living room. And we just have a conversation about life and what they're really, really looking for. And, you know, as a designer, your job is to really listen to what the customer is, is telling you about what is going to resonate with them and what they really, really need. Um, a lot of times, uh, people won't even think about, oh, you know what? I would, I mean, I really love pockets. Why can't I get pockets? You know, and, and small things like that. And so after I've gathered all of the information for them, um, I usually do sketches. I don't give them more than three because they'll be confused after that. they have already gone shopping in, in the stores and they like the top of this or they like the lace of this. What do you like about this design? Well, I think I like the way that it fits her body. Well, everyone's body is completely different. And so, um, you know, I always I make sure that I give them choices of things. And so that I'll do a sketch presentation for them. They'll come back. And they will look at the illustrations front and back. They'll look at touch and feel all the fabrics that I have, the textiles that we were going to use to construct and create the design for them. And once they sign off on that, I can give them a price, let them know how much it's going to cost, and then how many appointments they'll need for um, pattern making. Because once we do the design, we take their measurements, we make a pattern, and then we make a mock-up of the design, which is called a muslin. So it's the exact dress that I illustrated in this like I don't know canvas kind right. of cotton fabric that I'm going to just mark up and you know adjust to fit their body and so once um they'll have two fittings in muslin so once we do that after the second one everything should be fine then we're able to cut into the fabric they'll have three or four fittings depending on the construction of their bridal gown and then um, on the final fitting, I always tell them, bring your shoes, your jewelry, your bag, so that we can like style you and you know exactly the look that you want the morning of your wedding. I mean, it's like, um, it's a really fun process. And to see the evolution of the client from the first time they come in to when the dress is finished, it's it's absolutely amazing. And it's a wonderful experience. I, you know, I bet it is. I mean, do pe do they bring other people in? Like we've seen all these shows, right? Say yes to the dress, which I think really focused on the actual experience right. of going out and looking for a dress. Do they do that? Bringing family and friends? They'll and ask me, I mean, I, I, I don't like to have more than like four people at a time because, and then I have to remind the people when they're coming, the, the guests of the bride, of the client when they're coming in, that this is all about her. This is not about you. This is something that she's picked out. And so I want you to be very respectful of her wishes. And so, you know, I've had people that have not complied and they were not welcomed back because it's it's about her, you know? That's so true. How many times, you know, you have a, a loving mom, right? That really wants to see her daughter in something that looks like Cinderella, but she doesn't want that. She wants something that's very sleek and elegant. And, right. you know, we, we have to remember it's not, it's not their, you know, it's not our wedding, it's their wedding. And right. I, I agree with you. So tell me what you do when you have a client and, and that sees a certain style on them. Mm -hmm. And maybe this is where having your own custom design can work for you. Uh, yet, you know, that might not fit their body style. So I'm a, I'm, I'm a, I'm a designer of the people and okay. I'm going to be Love extremely that. honest with you. Um, not everybody's body is the same. And because I am a pattern maker, I can construct pieces to give you a vision of what you're looking at to fit your figure. Not everybody can, will look good in a mermaid style or a fit and flare. Some people might look good in A-line. Some people will look better in a ball gown. It just depends on what your vision is. And I I, I've, I had a client uh, two days ago that wanted something that would absolutely not be flattering on her figure. And I told her all the reasons why, but I had a solution. I said, this is what I would suggest you do. If you like all of these elements, we can take all of these elements, we can give you a different silhouette and put them all together. And I, I promise you, you're going to look amazing. So, um, you know, once once the, the client gets, you know, is comfortable with you and confident that you can do what you say you can do, it, it's a fun experience after that. But you just have to be really, really honest with people. I don't, I'm not going to just say something just because I want to sell you something. I really want you to feel great in the pieces that we make for you. 
So in the beginning of this podcast, you heard me talk about the average cost of a wedding dress is about $1,900. Mm-hmm. And I think that people have this perception in their mind, okay, uh, that a belief, I should say, mm-hmm. that a wedding gown that's designed couture for them is going to cost an upward of five to ten thousand dollars. Now, I, I recognize that certain tech, textile textiles, excuse me, there are going to cost more. What do you have to say to that? And I'm not asking for a specific price range, but if you can share with us a little bit about what somebody can maybe expect that's on a limited budget. So there is there there are textiles and price points for everyone's budget. And if you come in with a budget in mind, so this is how much I have to spend. What can I expect with this amount of money? And can I have a custom bridal gown made? The answer is always going to be yes, because there's always um, beautiful fabrications available. And then when you think about the word couture, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's expensive. It's the way that the garments are constructed. Um, and I learned that a long time ago when I was in college, because I couldn't even pronounce couture. I kept calling <laughs> it couture and all this stuff. And my instructor's like, just drop the O and say couture. And I said, oh, okay, thank you very much. But she really gave me a tutorial on how to, how the construction portion of a couture garment makes it more refined, makes it more expensive. And, you know, it's true. If you use um, higher quality silk or whatever, yes, the price, you know, can and will go up. However, it, 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 it it's true foundation is on how the, the garments are constructed. So, mm-hmm. yeah, everybody can have a custom bridal gown made. What, what trends are you seeing today uh, for 2024 coming up? with the uh, clients that you have as far as colors design well my color my my clients and i we don't follow trends we make the trend Um, i love that okay yeah Yeah. we well and we don't be mainly because like i said before not everybody's body is the same and just because you see something that's visually appealing in a magazine doesn't necessarily mean that if you buy that or you try it on the whole image of what you viewed in your head is going to translate onto your body. And, um, you know, to not create disappointment for people, it's like, if you like something about an image that you've seen, write it down, take a picture of it. If you like the bottom of the dress, if you like the top of the lace, if you like the, um, the trend now where everything is practically nude and there's lots of boning and things look like they're falling off of your, off of your body. For someone very, very small and petite, that would be wonderful. But someone that has, you know, a large bust, it's very difficult to translate that design to fit their fit their body in that image that they've just seen. So, yeah. Interesting you say that because the other day when I performed a wedding ceremony, I had a bride came in and she was just so uncomfortable because she had a strapless gown. She was a little, you know, large busted and she was having problems. Fortunately, we had double sided tape, but Mm -hmm. had she maybe taken the time to have adjustments Mm -hmm. made wherever she bought the gown would have made a big difference because you know what, there's nothing worse, right? Than not feeling comfortable in your wedding gown. Exactly. And then, you know, like I tell brides, when you buy a wedding dress and you're in the store, the dress is going to be big on you. So the salesperson is going to take the back of the dress and they're going to clip it, which means they're going to put a clip at the top, put one at the waist and maybe one down by just above your 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 butt. And they're going to pull the dress in. So when you're standing there looking at yourself, um, a strap of stress, it's, oh my gosh, this is great. It's beautiful. You think that you have coverage, but it's a strapless dress, which means it's it's going to sit low on your body. And then sometimes when the dresses come in, they try on their actual dress like, oh, my gosh, I didn't realize that this was so low. Um, I don't want the priest looking down at my bus when he's you know giving me my, you know, I'm trying to get married and stuff. And so they 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 come in panicking because they want coverage and they're all and that's why they're always pulling up their dresses. Right. Um, so I always tell them when you're in the store. Um, Tell them not to clip it so tight. Tell them to, if they clip the dress, to clip it right where the waist sits, because then you'll see how low the dress is cut Mm -hmm. and whether or not you want that style or you want to have a piece, you know, I call them modesty panels put in. You can all do. I love that. (laughs) Yeah, Mm -hmm. absolutely. So now let's just take a, a moment here, because I know you work on 
you know, bridal attire, but let's talk about somebody else coming in. I know you're not just limited to, uh, you know, producing and making bridal gowns. Mm -hmm. No, we design and construct everything from leather pants to wedding dresses and everything in between. We work with fur, we work with feathers, we work with like, you know, copper, like brass. Um, there isn't, there hasn't been anything that we haven't been able to make. And what, that's what I love about what we do. Um, as pattern makers, we can make patterns for all types of garments. So we do beautiful coats and fur and suits for ladies, you know, business attire. We make killer pants, you know, make everybody's butt look really, really good. Um, so yeah, we, we're, we're a universal designer. So I'm not strictly a bridal designer, but can I do bridal work? Yes, I absolutely can. Yeah. I, I love that. So anything on the horizon for you that you'd like to share with us before we um, sign off soon? Cause I love, I mean, this is something that this is an important day in a bride's life. I mean, some women, and I'm going to use women in particular, I'm not trying to be gender, have dreamt of this special day for right. a very long time. So great. Yeah. People with them, um, uh, I, I call them like their, uh, their books that they keep all their whole life in. And, you know, the wedding dress is, is, is something very prominent in their, in their life. And, you know, you don't, you can have what you want if you want it. Like if you, you have an image in your mind of what it is that you want for your wedding, your special day, you can absolutely have someone custom make it for you. You probably won't find it in a store because of all of the components that you want in a dress, but you can have someone make it for you. So if that's something that you truly, truly want in your life, then I tell people do it. Just go ahead and do it. The same amount of money you'd spend to go buy a dress and then you have to have alterations to it. You could have somebody take your measurements, custom make the dress for the same price. You just said something that's so true. When my daughter got married almost 12 years ago, we went over to David. David's bridal. We mm -hmm. bought a dress. It was about $500. It was that much to have it altered. Right. So right there, you're at a thousand dollars. So you're a hundred percent right. And people don't realize when you have it, it's already made for you. It makes right. all the difference in the world. Gosh, I want to thank you so much for your time. And I'm going to also put the links in the show notes of how people can find you. And it's Sandra Falk. Um, Couture. Couture. Yes. And which in Las Vegas, Nevada, but you know what, anybody, if, even if you don't live in Las Vegas and you might be going shopping someplace else, take what Sandra said, mm -hmm. because she gave some really valuable information, just like the information on the clip. Don't have them pull it on the bus, have them pull it on the waist. So that way, if you are wearing something strapless, then when that dress comes in, so you're saving yourself a lot of right. headache and anxiety. And there's right. nothing worse. And I see this because I've done quite a few wedding ceremonies right. where a bride is not comfortable in her gown or her right. dress. And that's important. So definitely. Um, and then I love the idea of you naming your dresses after the saints. <laughs> yeah. I love that. I love that. So I want to thank you so much. Um, you go have a great day. Everybody that's listening, go have a great day. And remember to spread love. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you so much.